family and the afflictions of genealogy. Um, hopefully you can understand my accent. If you can't, just raise your hand. I'll repeat myself. Um, <clears throat> according to my brother, Jono, my vegetarianism was infinitely more difficult for him to accept than my homosexuality. <laughs> Years earlier, I told him I was gay, and he just shrugged and said, Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, sweet. You just keep your hands off my wife, Lesbo. <laughs> now, now, on account of my vegetarianism, he was completely lost. You see, giving up meat in my family is kind of like being Gandhi's kid and telling your dad you think peace is overrated. <laughs> I was turning my back on the one thing that they all believed in. Are you sure this vegetarian thing isn't just a phase? My brother offered. Did something happen to you when you were younger? <laughs> Look, maybe you just haven't had any really good meat. <laughs> Jono began desperately searching through the yellow pages, hoping to find some sort of witch doctor or religious group that might cure my disease of the mind. <laughs> Meanwhile, I tried to console him with the fact that my lack of meat eating would undoubtedly result in increased consumption for him. Think of all that extra bacon, Jono! <laughs> this only seemed to remind him of the gravity of the situation. The sorrow in his eyes transformed into a look of loss, fused with the distance and distaste one generally reserves for pitying lepers. I, uh, I just don't feel like I know you anymore, Jessie. <laughs> I grew up in New Zealand, a country where at last count there were seven sheep per person. A country where our most concerning emission of greenhouse gases is caused by the flatulence of livestock. <laughs> and a country where it's impossible to separate the fluffy white thing bleeding around outside from the juicy slab of reddish brown sliding around your dinner plate. And this, well this is really the thing that gets me down about being the only vegetarian in my family. They're all so positively at peace with their meat eating that I don't even get to be self-righteous. And in my opinion, being self-righteous is one of the major perks of being a vegetarian. <laughs> like, you're entitled to tell Bambi stories while people eat venison. And I like to think of it as my job to share charming anecdotes about slaughterhouses. But not in my family. Oh no. When it comes to eating meat, my family believes in honesty to the point of vulgarity. A technique used almost religiously by my, by my brother Jono and his wife Ruth. One night, whilst at their house, I observed my four-year-old niece, Olivia, staring blankly into the oven. Mummy, what's that? Olivia's huge blue eyes blinked through the fatty smoke. It's roast vegetables and lamb, Olivia, Ruth replied. Is it a little baby lamb? Yes, darling, it's a little baby lamb. <laughs> like I said, their non-euphemistic approach is pretty inspiring. Is it a little baby lamb? Like on Uncle Sullivan's farm. Uh-huh, just like that. <laughs> Olivia stared and stared at the bubbling flesh. Her little brain began to whir as she remembered lovingly bottle feeding a newborn lamb at my younger brother's farm the weekend before. I paused. I looked up slyly from my book as the book that I was pretending to read in the opposite room, giddy with the anticipation of the glorious moment that was about to come. Mummy, Olivia started, stepping back ever so slightly from the burning carcass. I can hear the little baby lamb crying. It was brilliant! Four years old, and already I would be welcoming her to the fold. I hovered, waiting for my moment, waiting to jump in and guide her to the corner of the virtuous, the disciplined, the calmer free. Oh, I don't think so, sweetheart, Ruth replied, tacking a little, then backing it up with surprising bluntness. It's probably just the fat crackling. <laughs> Meat eaters, so cocky. I hear it, mummy, I hear it crying. It was too much. I could hardly contain my smirk, let alone my urge to start chanting, friends, not food. <laughs> Olivia's bottom lip began to quiver. The sound of crackling fat began to overwhelm the room. 
Finally, my sister-in-law Ruth spoke. Well, you don't have to eat meat, Olivia. She was conceding. I could feel it. Bowing down to a contender she could not beat. Conscience. I imagined Olivia and I going out for scrambled tofu and soy lattes. I pictured us driving our hybrid cars and swapping lentil recipes. Just as soon as she was old enough to operate the oven. But then Ruth pulled out the trump card, cornered her, poor little thing. She never had a chance. Of course you don't have to eat meat, darling, but just remember that whatever you decide, will be applying the same decision to eating bacon on Sunday. Oh. A low, low, dirty pork blow. Now Olivia's conscience and her stomach began to whir. She stared further at the glowing oven door. Little lambs danced across her face again, bleating and skipping. But this time, this time they were followed by sweet, salty little piglets. Their juicy rumps booty shaking in her big blue eyes. She looked at me, the suffering, ridiculed freak. The vegetarian. Then she looked back at the oven. More lambs, more pigs. Olivia looked at me once more. I tried to look welcoming and happy and healthy and guiltless. Apparently this translated as desperate, deprived and hungry. <laughs> okay, mummy, she said. I'll eat the little baby lamb. Okay, I'll eat the little baby lamb. Hard to be judgmental when someone's so honest. My younger brother Sullivan is a sheep farmer. He told me once about an entire day that he'd spent slaughtering, carving and preparing sheep carcasses. He said that the one time he's even momentarily considered becoming a vegetarian was at dinner that night. You see, Jesse, he explained, no matter how many times you wash your hands, it takes days to get the smell of blood out from under your fingernails. So every time I'd lift my fork up to my mouth, I'd get this whiff of lambs. Made me dry meat, dry reach, actually. It was bloody awful. I can imagine, I smiled, silently vomiting in my mouth. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing for sure though, mate. I don't waste a scrap of meat these days. I bet. It took two years, five family roast dinners, eight barbecues, and one miserably fucking hungry Christmas for my family to finally resign themselves to the fact that I would no longer partake in the cherished ritual of eating meat. Eventually, they gave up trying to cure me and just took to protecting themselves from catching what they viewed as the palsy. <laughs> and I reckon that's the thing with family. Even though you have the same gene pool, you don't all catch the same diseases. You don't have to agree with each other, you just have to tolerate each other and try to keep your germs to yourself. And that's the point, I think. To try. You try to understand them and their bacon-wrapped sausage fetish. And they try to understand you and all your liberal, self-righteous lesbitarianism. <laughs>